Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Please get out your King James Bibles. It's God's perfect written word for English speaking people, and please follow along. You can pause the video and turn to the scriptures that we're going through, but today's topic is Did Jesus Christ Burn in Hell? Okay, and I've got stuff on the board here that we're going to be talking about as we're going to go through some scriptures. Okay? I was watching a brother in Christ do a study on it, and it's like, well, I need to get a study on it out of my channel. So we're going to put together a study. And we're going to talk about it, and I'm going to show you some areas where I kind of disagree with some of the brethren. And basically, we're going to answer the question. There's a false teaching that goes out there that Jesus burned in hell. And that's a false, and when you get done with this study, when we get done with this study, you're going to find out that's a false teaching. Okay, so King James Bibles, put mine right there. And I got my notes right here, brother, since Christ is not only pointing. So, first... As we get into this, I'm going to start talking about the diagram. We're going to get some information together, and then we're going to talk about what happened here, what goes on here, what's going on here. Okay. So first, where is Abraham's bosom? Are, bosom, are there different levels in hell? Okay. Some of you might notice the picture here where I've got this down here and this way up here, and most, people, most brethren that you see, they draw a T. Okay. They, they'll sit here and they'll draw a T and draw a line here and they've got Abraham's bosom on one side and they've got hell on the other side. That's not, after doing the study, I realized that's not correct. Okay. Because one of the biggest things is, is that foul messed people up. I'm getting ahead of myself. That messes people up is it said Jesus went to hell, not Abraham's bosom. Therefore, he burned in hell. That's their big argument. I'm going to show you where they're in error. Okay, turn to Luke 16, okay, in your King James Bibles, turn to Luke 16. This is the story, it doesn't say it's a parable. That's why a lot of us believe that really, Jesus was given an example of something that really happened because it didn't say it was a parable. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at the gate full of sores. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked, a, licked his sores. And here it is. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. That's what A-B is. Abraham's bosom. Okay? This first time we hear about Abraham's bosom. But if you read the Old Testament, it talks about taking us to a safe place. Okay? Uh, when they die, they get taken to a safe place. They don't get to go to heaven, but they get taken to a secret place. Okay? Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. He lift up his eyes. He didn't look across. That's why I believe that T is wrong, and I'll show you why else I think that's wrong. But he lifted up his eyes. He lifted up his eyes. Okay. In hell, he lift his eyes. He lift up his eyes. And being in torment, he seeth Abraham afar off. There's a big gulf afar off. Okay. And Lazarus in his bosom. You got Lazarus, you got Abraham. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may tip his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Remember that. He was asking for water he, because he was tormented in this flame. It's going to come back to us when we start talking about what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Okay. But Abraham said, Son... Remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things, but now he is comforted, and, th and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us, right here, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they that pass to us that was come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, Therefore, Father, thou wouldst 
that thou would send them, would send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham, or Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And you read about the Bible, about how prophet after prophet would go and preach to them, and they would slay the prophets. They'd throw the prophets in prison. Have you read about, I think it was Jeremiah. Uh, Jeremiah was reading in Isaiah, and sometimes I get them mixed up between the two, but one of them, he was thrown in a dungeon where it's like it was a pit. And imagine like mud in the pit that goes up to your knees, and he's down there, and they had to actually, when they went to free him, there was a eunuch that begged the king, saying that he's going to die. They had to drop ropes down to wrap around his arms to pull him out. So what were they doing to the prophets? They were imprisoning them, they were stoning them, they were killing them. Okay. And some of the prophets, you look, read about Elijah, they did many signs and wonders. Elijah, Elisha, they did many signs and wonders. But the, the, the people were amazed, and they believed for a little bit, and then they went back to their old ways. Okay, I say that some believed, but some got caught up in the, wow, it's a sign, it's a great power of God. But they went back to their ways really quick. Let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Really? That's not the record. I point at this, but that's not the record. The record is, is no matter what God did, the Jews as a whole kept turning their back on him. Some would turn to him, praise God, but a lot of them would turn their back on him. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, the one rose from the dead. He's saying, they won't believe. You had Lazarus raised from the dead, some believed, but in the end they all turned Jesus was left alone. Right. Jesus raised, uh, raised a few people from the dead. Did it do anything? No. In the long run, did it do anything? No. Just want to throw that point out there. But here we read the first... We, this is where we learn about Abraham's bosom. And then we'll get to this part here. But hell, and when the people die... In the, before Jesus Christ's crucifixion, before he died on the cross, before his death, before he died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, people went to two places. They went to hear or they went to hear. That's what's being said here. Now it's important. Turn to Psalm 16, chapter 16, verse 10. It's important because we go back to the Psalms and King David talks about this. And sometimes we miss this. But King David talks about this. And I understand that some brethren try to put out teachings that there's different levels in hell. No. There's just these two. That's it. And I'll show it to you. Psalm 16.10 For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. This is King David. His soul goes to hell? Where's Abraham's bosom? Hell. It's in hell. It's in the earth. It's in hell. This is King David. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. So on one side there's no corruption. On one side there's corruption. I tried to draw the fire. I know my art is just so amazing. I tried to draw this to make it look like fire. They're seeing corruption over here. And destruction. But it's not happening over here. You say, well, that, that's, not, uh, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. I believe when, when King David said, Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, he's talking about Abraham's bosom. Neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption, because there's no corruption over here. Okay, if I'm pointing right, there's no corruption over here. Turn to Psalms 86. You say, well, that's, that's kind of stretching it. Turn to Psalms 86, verse 13. For great is thy mercy towards me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. So that's where people get, well, if there's a lowest hell, then there must be different levels of hell. The lowest hell. 
Both these places are in hell. They're in the earth. They're in hell. But this is Abraham's bosom that's up here. That's why I put it up here. And it said that uh, the rich man looking up. And then King David says, For great is thy mercy towards me, and thou hast not delivered, and thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. The lowest hell. See, this is the best. I, I mean, if I was a better artist, I could make it a little bit better, make everything fit just right. But I wanted to get it big enough so you could see. You got Abraham's bosom that's higher, and then you have the lowest hell down here. Down here is where there's where there's corruption. Up here, there is no corruption. That's the difference. Okay, the lowest part of hell where one does see corruption. Abraham's bosom, where one doesn't see corruption. This is important as we start reading this some more. Okay, reading the Bible some more. So now let's get back to the question. Did Jesus go to hell? And we explain where Abraham's bosom is. It's in hell. So when it says Jesus went, Jesus' soul, I gotta say this right, because we're gonna get into this. Jesus' soul went to hell. It went down here. It didn't go over here, it went down here. But let's read it. Ephesians 4:8. Ephesians 4, 8, chap chapter 4, verse 8. If you can turn in your King James Bibles. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Verse 9. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Where is all this going on? It makes it look like it's just below the crest because it's supposed to be the earth. I apologize, but... It's actually way down in the earth. Okay. That he descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Heaven's way, heaven's way up here above all that. Okay. He descended, then he ascended. Okay. When Jesus died, get a little ahead of myself, when Jesus died, his physical God manifest in the flesh, the physical body went into the sepulcher. And we're going to get to the verse where it talks about Jesus' soul went to hell. Talking about Abraham's bosom. See, people think Abraham's bosom is not hell. It's a completely separate place. They're both in hell. Except Abraham's bosom, there's no corruption. The lowest hell, there's corruption. This is where people burn. Did Jesus go there? That's the question. And the answer is no. We're going to keep going. Turn to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Verse 25. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, all my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Now, when you read Psalms, there's something I didn't point out yet. When we read in Psalm 1610, you can always pause and go look again just to make sure I'm not lying to you. But, but thou, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, Paul, I believe uh, King David is talking about himself. But God got him to write it down in a way that it's a future prophecy. Why? Because it says, Neither will thou suffer thy Holy One. And it's capitalized. Capital H, capital O. Now remember when uh, King David wouldn't mess with Saul, uh, kill Saul or hurt Saul because he's God's anointed one? There's anointed one, and King David's anointed one by God. But Holy One? That's more of a title, you think, for Jesus Christ. For God himself, he's the only Holy One. To see corruption, once again, corruption goes on down here. But he didn't see corruption, is what this is saying. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. His body's in the ground, but where's King David's soul? It's over here. Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, said it is a finished, and he died. I think it was Nicodemus. Correct me if I'm wrong. But there was a man that went to Pontius Pilate to beg for the body of Jesus Christ, and he was 
buried in a sepulcher. That's where his body was. But where was his soul? And who was his soul? We're going to get into that too. But you see, King David, he's in a sepulcher. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruits of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Has that happened yet? No. That's, the t that's why we got the time of Jacob's trouble and we have the day of the Lord, also called the kingdom of heaven, where Jesus rules and reigns for a thousand years. He's going to be sitting on the throne of David. Just a little side note, in the Bible when you see a capital S Son of God, it's talking about Jesus Christ being God manifest in the flesh. God the Father manifest in the flesh. The Son of God. Okay. When you see capital S Son of Man, it's talking about Jesus Christ's bloodline that goes back to King David, where he's going to be sitting on a throne. Therefore, being a prophet, knowing that God has sworn the oath unto him, that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he should raise up Christ to sit on the throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Now stop right there. Remember, that's where people get all messed up. He, he says he went to hell, so Jesus must have burned in hell. But what about that second part of the verse that says, neither his flesh did see corruption. This is corruption. There's no corruption over here. Constant destruction. Corruption. Wicked, wicked men. People over here, they have their blood covered with the, sac with the blood of animals and goats, but their sin's not taken away. They're not, they're not seeing corruption over here. You see that, brothers says Christ? His soul went to hell. That lets us know where's Abraham's bosom. It's in hell. People try to separate it completely from hell because it's not. it can't be hell. It's in hell. But it's not the lowest hell. This is the two levels of hell. Abraham's bosom and the lowest hell. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, that, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. He, he ascended, but, but first he descended, and then he ascended. He went down to Abraham's bosom. Be careful of people trying to push, oh, he burned in hell, he burned in hell. We're going to talk about where Jesus Christ did his burning. It wasn't in hell. It wasn't in the lowest hell. It wasn't here in Abraham's bosom. He didn't do his burning here. There is no burning here. We'll talk about where he did his burning. Okay. First point I want to make here, you see he went to hell, but not to the lower parts of hell where there is corruption. Matthew 12, 40 says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Remember, his body, his body is in a sepulcher for three days. What's it talk about? We just read there that his soul was not left in hell. Jesus' soul went to Abraham's bosom. This is really going to trip some those Trinitarians up because we're going to get into the, the Godhead a little bit. We have to. It's going to really trip some of them up because they can't believe what the scriptures actually say. They've got to add to the word of God and add, add a lot of pagan gods, plural. Okay? But this is another good one for the, the Godhead, how Jesus is the body of God the Father. Okay? Matthew 2 10, I'm sorry, Matthew 10, 28, we read, And fear not them which is able, uh, fear not them which kill the body. Jesus Christ, they killed him. He went in the grave. Fear not them that's able to kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. There's constant destruction going on over here. There's corruption going on over here. All right. That's a good point. first point I want to make out. Jesus, the soul, Jesus' soul, went down to Abraham's bosom for three days. And then when he came back up, he, he was raised from the dead. Who raised him from the dead? The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. No, no, God the Father raised him from the dead. No, no, Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. And, he says, and the Bible says he was put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the capital S Spirit. The Holy Spirit raised him from the dead. And then God said, I will raise him up. The Godhead raised Jesus Christ from the dead. 
If you believe in the Godhead, you'll understand. If you believe in anything else, you won't. Okay, we're going to go off on a little rabbit trail real quick because the point I'm making here with the soul part is very important. Second point, who is the soul of Jesus Christ? If you believe in the true biblical Godhead of the King James Bible, the soul of Jesus Christ is God the Father. What's, what's the spirit of Jesus Christ? It's the Holy Spirit. What, who actually went down to Abraham's bosom to free them? It's God the Father. Matthew 12, 8. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, and whom my soul, this is God the Father speaking, and whom my soul is well pleased. So we got God the Father mentioned, soul. I will put my spirit, Holy Spirit's being mentioned, upon him, the body, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. The Trinitarians hate this. Where does it say they that are of God hear God's words. You therefore hear them up because you are not of God. My words are all plain to them that understand. It's in the word of God. Body, soul, and spirit. John, 1 John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father. Remember we just talked about in 1 Matthew 12, 18. The soul. The word. The physical manifestation of God, God manifest in the flesh, His Son, capital S, Son of God, Jesus Christ, the body, and the Holy Ghost, the Spirit. And these three are one. They're one. It's one person. The Godhead, I'll say it again, the Godhead is God the Father in the person singular of Jesus Christ. God the Father doesn't have three parts Jesus Christ has three parts. The Godhead has three parts. God the Father is the soul. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Once again, body, soul, and spirit. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through ph philosophy and vain deceit. That's what the Trinity is. It's philosophy and vain deceit. The vain deceit is, is it's three gods, but it's one God. But it's three gods, but it's, it's multiple gods, period. And it has no biblical basis. I want to go off on a side a little bit. Just say, I always push this, brother, says Christ. When someone tries to tell me the Trinity is truth, the Trinity is truth. Capital, chapter and verse on capital T, Trinity is a title for God in the King James Bible. Chapter and verse on lowercase Trinity is a title for God in the King James Bible. Chapter and verse where it says the Godhead is God in three persons. We're going to get to the point where I prove it, that God is in Jesus Christ. The Bible does say that. The Bible calls Jesus a person uh, four times. So it says that God is in Jesus Christ, and it says Jesus, the Bible says Jesus Christ is a person, but nowhere does it say God in three persons in the King James Bible. Philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world. Some people preach it because it's just customary. It's just tradition. We always have taught it this way. There's a lot of brethren out there, good men of God, that love the Lord and fear the Lord, that they believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, but they still use Trinity terms. Why? Traditions of men. Rudiments of the world. We always have done it. The church fathers did it. Where did the church fathers get it from? The Reformation? Where did the Reformation get it from? Catholicism? How about you break the chain of worldliness and just stick with the King James Bible? That's my advice to you, brothers and sisters of Christ. Stick with the book. Stick with the book. It's right. The world's wrong. And not after Christ. What happens when you start getting blinded by all this stuff? You, you fail to go after Christ. You fail to line up with this book. When you start going over philosophy and vain deceit and traditions of men and rudiments of the world, verse 9, for in him, who's the him? Jesus Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ has God the Father in him as the soul, and the Holy Spirit, his spirit's the Holy Spirit. And he's the body. It's that clear in the Bible. To those of us who believe that this is perfect, and we don't need to add to it and subtract from it. Okay. But this is important because remember it said his soul 
went to hell. You will not leave my soul in hell. Okay. I already said this. The Trinity is philosophy based on vain deceit after the traditions of men rudiments of the world. The Godhead is absolute truth found in God's perfect written word. The true Godhead, I'll say it again, we'll probably do another huge study on it later. The Godhead is God the Father in the person singular of Jesus Christ. That's the Godhead. It's not God in three parts. It's not God in three persons. Okay? It's God the Father in the person singular of Jesus Christ. Now, don't want to lose my place. Luke 23, turn to Luke 23. <coughs> this is another rabbit trail. I know how you can go off on rabbit trails. Just some information the Lord gave me. We're going to get back to this, okay? But this is information that has to do with what we're seeing here. Jesus, the body, went into the sepulcher. I didn't draw up the picture of the sepulcher. But his soul, which is God the Father, went down to Abraham's bosom to lead captivity captive, to free the Old Testament saints. Jesus had died, his blood was shed to wash their sins away. And they could all go to heaven. Today, Abraham's bosom is empty. But before Jesus' death on the cross, you went here or you went there. Now let's go back up here a little bit. How many of you guys remember the story of the malefactor, one of the thieves on the cross? Luke 23, verse 39. And one of the malefactors, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. I have a great teaching. If you haven't seen it, please go watch it. Did the thief have a changed life on the cross? Because when you read all the tellings, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, all the tellings of the thief on the cross, both started railing on him at the beginning. And halfway through the, the, them being crucified, halfway through the day, one had a change of heart. And this is what we're seeing here is the change of heart. One is railing on him. Save thyself and us. But the other, the one that had a change of heart, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost that now dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. We're filthy and wicked and sinners. But this man has done nothing amiss. He's perfect. He's got to be God manifest in the flesh. He's perfect. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. You say, Brother Philip, why would you bring this up? I brought this up because most teachers teach another false, what I believe is false, and I fell for it for a while, is that he's talking about this place right here when he said paradise. No, he's not. And I'll prove it to you. Okay? The word paradise is only mentioned three times in the New Testament. Probably in the whole Bible period, but I was looking at the New Testament. It's only mentioned three times in the New Testament. You want to know what those three times are? We just read one where he's saying, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Remember it said God that his soul, God the Father, soul went to hell, Abraham's bosom. Okay. But first, let's read the next one. 2 Corinthians. Turn to 2 Corinthians 12. Where is the next time paradise is mentioned? 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such a one caught up to the third heaven. People say, well, there's three heavens? Yeah. There's from the ground to the air, to the sky, the clouds. You got from the sky to where the stars are. And then what's beyond the stars? The third heaven. Some people think, it's sad. there's songs where the clouds be rolled back like a scroll. Some people, te some brethren teach that what if the stars are just right there and it gets rolled back and there's heaven? That's the third heaven. That's the heaven. That's where God is. Okay. Caught up to the third heaven. He's talking about he got all the way. He made it all the way. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which is not lawful for man to utter. How he was brought up into 
paradise. Or where do they get that this is the paradise? Well, because the man before me said it, and the man before him said it, and the man before him, and the man before him. What about the Bible? How did you get this to be in paradise? Uh, we really didn't check it. We just went with what so-and-so said. Well, let's, let's do a word study in the word paradise. Right there, it talks about paradise being heaven, the third heaven. You say, well, paradise can be in multiple places. Turn to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. People say, see, look, there, it's on the earth. But where did it come from? Revelation 21, verse 2. Revelation 21, verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem. Remember, the new, this is talking about the new heaven, the new earth. The old heaven, the old earth is burned away. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. That city comes out of heaven and the tree of life is in there. You go read all about it in Revelation. The tree of life. When you get out to the future, when it gets out to eternity, you know, the eight, we call it the eighth dispensation. It's out there. It's after the day of the Lord. Jesus rules for a thousand years. Satan's let loose for a little while. Then Jesus destroys the army that tries to come up against the city. He destroys the heaven and the earth. You have the great white throne judgment. And then he creates a new heaven and a new earth. And this city comes out of heaven. Where is paradise at? It's in heaven. Okay, but you say he'll be, but Jesus said thou will be with me in paradise. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But remember what we just talked about, and I already explained it through the scriptures. Remember what I just talked about? Jesus, the body, he went into the sepulcher. He went into the grave. Who went down here? God the Father. The soul of Jesus Christ. They are one when Jesus said, Thou will be with me, if he's with the Father, he's with me, him. Right? Remember that it was Jesus' soul, which is God the Father, that went down to Abraham's bosom for three days and three nights. And we know, and I want to prove it, I've proved this in other studies, we know that a soul can be in two places at once. Maybe some of you are new to this, brothers and Christ, you're like, really? I didn't. A soul can be in two places at once. Matthew 12, 50. God the Father and the soul, I'll get ahead of myself, the God the Father and the soul is in heaven, seated on the throne, running everything. But God the Father and the soul is in Jesus Christ too. So while God the Father the soul is in heaven, God the Father and the soul went down to Abraham's bosom also. The soul can be in two places at once. Now, here's the thing. You ask me, how is that possible, Brother Philip? How is that possible? Great is the mystery of godliness. I don't know how it's possible. I can only prove to you that it is. If God says this can happen, it can happen. How can it happen? I don't know. But here's the proof. Matthew chapter 12, verse 50. For whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. God the Father, the soul, is in heaven. Yeah. The same as my brother and sister and mother. Because people always complain, how does God the Father in heaven, the soul, call down and say, this is my son of whom I am well pleased, and he's in Jesus Christ, because a soul can be in two places at once. And I'm going to prove that. Matthew 16, 17, we read again. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Mark 11.20, there was tons of them, I just grabbed three. Mark 11.26, But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. So we see the Bible clearly states God the Father is in heaven. Right. Now what about God the Father and Jesus Christ? The verse is proving that God the Father is in Jesus Christ. Absolutely. Turn to John 14.10. John 14, 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? 
The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the work. The soul, God the Father, the soul is in Jesus Christ? Yes. Believe me not, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. What Jesus was saying was, is, when I speak, it's God the Father speaking. When I heal, it's God the Father healing. He tells Philip, when Philip says, show us the Father and it suffices us, he says, have thou been long time with me, talking about Jesus, the body, has thou been long time with me and has thou not known me, Philip? No, show us the Father, God the Father, God the Father. Show, have you not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. And you still have, like I said, these hardcore Trinitarians reject the Godhead of the King James Bible. I'll get to my point here in a second. Well, I made my point for the Godhead, but for this right here. Matthew 28, 18. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. That's the Godhead. When they're all in Jesus Christ, that's the Godhead. He's the person of the Godhead. But what happens in Acts 2.38? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. What happened to the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost? Jesus has all three in him. He's all three. All you have to do is baptize in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Can a soul be in two places? When Jesus died, his body went into the sepulcher. His soul, which is God the Father, went down here. But God the Father, the soul, is in heaven too. So where did this thief on the cross, when he says, Today thou will be with me in paradise? He's in heaven. Jesus had died. Notice, remember the story. Jesus died before he did. The blood was shed. The perfect blood was shed. Jesus said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. He went up. The only place the Bible talks about paradise is heaven. Okay. I, just, I just want to say that, that God showed me that. I was like, really, Lord? He went up. Okay. God, the Father, the soul is in heaven. And, it's in, and God, the Father, the soul went down here. And Jesus said, you will be with me this day in paradise. Not in the grave. Not in Abraham's bosom. Because if this was paradise, I just want to throw this out there, brother. If this was paradise, I can imagine, uh, remember the Bible says jesting isn't good, but I can imagine you can make a little funny cartoon where they're all like, we're not leaving. We love it here. It's paradise here. Why would we want to leave? It's great here in Abraham. We don't want to go anywhere. It wasn't paradise. It's like a waiting room. They were waiting to go to paradise. They are waiting to go to heaven. They are waiting for that perfect sacrifice so they could go to heaven. It's not paradise, but it's not the lower hells either. Okay. Can a soul be in two places at once? Here's another example, Brother Scott. What about our soul? Now that we're saved, what about our soul? Can our soul be in two places at once? Some of you know where I'm going. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. But this is Christ, when we get saved because of our connection to Jesus Christ, we're in Christ Jesus. Our soul's no longer connected to this body. Our soul's connected to Jesus Christ. And because of that, his body, because of that, my soul's in this body, but my soul's also seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus right now. Can a soul be in two places at once? Yes. How does it work? I don't know. Brother says, Christ, I don't have that answer. If God, God will probably show us someday when we have the mind of Christ, when we get caught up, we're fully redeemed, we've got our new bodies, uh, this corruption must put on incorruption, this moral shall put on immortality. Okay? Maybe God will explain it and we'll understand it someday, but right now, I don't know. That's why the Bible says, great, great is the mystery of godliness. And it talks about the Godhead and lets us know what the Godhead is. 
It'll let us know that a soul can be in two places at once. It lets us know a body can only be in one place at any given time. You remember Philip and the eunuch? He was whooshed away. But he still can only be in one place at once. A body can only be in one place at once. Okay? A soul, uh, the, the Holy Spirit, is omnipresent. It's everywhere. It's in you, brother and sister Christ, if you're saved. It's in me. The Bible talks about in heaven, thou art there. The Holy Spirit is in heaven, thou art there. In the earth, thou art there. In hell, thou art there. The Holy Spirit's everywhere. Why do you think these people are burning for all eternity? As long as God exists and, the Holy, and His Holy Spirit, His Spirit, sin can't be in His presence, they're going to be burning for all eternity. The Holy Spirit's omnipresent. It's everywhere. How does that work? I don't know. That's how great the mystery of godliness is. But God lets us know what the Godhead is. God lets us know little things here and there. Praise God for what he does let us know. Okay? But we read there, the soul can be in two places at once. Our soul is in two places at once. Jesus said, God the Father is in heaven. Then he turns around and says, God the Father is in me. Not me, but Jesus Christ in him. Okay. So I want to bring that out about the soul part. What went down to Abraham's bosom? God the Father did. God the Father was in heaven. That person, that thief on the cross where Jesus said, This day thou shalt be with me in paradise. He's talking about God the Father in heaven. His soul is in heaven. His body didn't go to paradise. His body went to the grave for three days. And Jesus' soul... God the Father went to Abraham's bosom. That's not paradise. People keep saying it's paradise, but it's not paradise. If it was, what's the point in going to heaven? Heaven is paradise. The Bible says so. Okay, let's get back to the, the, the main point here. When did Jesus do his burning? Okay, people who teach Jesus, we already talked about how Jesus went to hell. He did. Abraham's bosom's in hell. But it's not the lowest hell. This is where the burning gets take, the, takes place. This is where the rich man was. And he's looking up. A higher level, lower level. The lowest hell. Okay. Uh, John, turn to John chapter 19. Remember the story of Lazarus up here and the rich man. Where the rich man is thirsting and he's desiring that he send Lazarus over to dip his finger in water and put it on my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Remember that. John 19, 28. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scriptures might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I thirst. This is happening up here when he's on the cross. I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon his and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, it's not water, it's vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. Right? Jesus did his burning on the cross. That's where Jesus did his burning, not down here. It was on the cross. Okay. Some people say, well, that's a contradiction because the Bible says over in Matthew that he didn't drink, he refused the vinegar, and yet here it says he's drinking vinegar. How many of you heard that? With people who like to attack the King James Bible. Turn to Matthew chapter 27, verse 34. It's another little rabbit trail. Okay. Hopefully you don't mind the rabbit trails, brothers and Christ. Matthew 27, verse 34. They gave him vinegar to drink mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. Did you, did you get that key piece of information? Before they nailed him to the cross, they were trying to give him vinegar, dr vinegar, vinegar to drink mingled with gall. You know what gall, do, that gall does there? It dulls the pain. It's their way of trying to show them mercy because of everything they had. They had to be scourged. And Jesus went through way worse than a regular scourging. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look in the Bible what talks about the Romans, what they wanted to do to uh, Paul. They were going to scourge him. He says, will thou do something to a Roman being uncondemned? Would thou hit a Roman being uncondemned? uncondemned? All right. The scourging was a normal thing, but what Jesus Christ went through was way worse. Why? Because they were mocking him. They had a lot of hate towards him. It wasn't just some prisoner that's getting punished. It, there was a lot of hate towards him. 
And when you hate somebody, that's why, just a side note, that's why as parents, when you go to discipline your child, you don't do it out of anger and hate. Okay? You calm down, and then you talk to them. Then you discipline your child. You might still, sp I still believe in spanking. Spare the rod, spoil the child. But you don't spank out of anger. These guys were angry and mocking Jesus Christ and going off on him. The soldiers were. Okay? He says he's a king. He says he's a king. But you read that the, the, the key word there is with gall. So they tried to give him um, uh, vinegar mingled with gall, and he said he wouldn't take it. Why? Because he has to do his burning on the cross. Okay. Here's another point part, going back to it. It's this, verse 30 in John 19, 1930, and when Jesus, when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, this is at the end, vinegar that wasn't mixed with gall, this was at the very end. He said, it is finished. Everything's done. Everything's been accomplished here. He doesn't have to go down here and burn because everything is accomplished here. It is finished. Now since it is finished, he can go down here and leave captivity captive. All right. So, brothers of Christ, be careful of this false teaching that Jesus burned in hell. Be careful of some of these errors that some of the brethren, I believe, are teaching, where heaven and hell, or, or hell and uh, Abraham's bosom are on the same level, and that there's like three or four levels of hell over here. No. This, the lower it's hell, then you have Abraham's bosom that's up here. There's no corruption over here. There's corruption over here. Right? The man on the cross, the thief, I'm sorry, the thief on the cross, didn't go to Abraham's bosom. He went to heaven. Because God, he said, where God, the soul of God is, or the soul of Jesus Christ, the soul of Jesus Christ is in heaven, God the Father is in heaven, and he's in Jesus Christ. The soul went down here, God the Father is down here, free in them, but he's also in heaven. Soul can be in two places at once. Matthew 7, 13. You say, you made this kind of big. I wanted to make it a lot bigger, but I wanted to show a distance here with a golf. But this is supposed to be a lot bigger than this. You made this one really skinny, and this one's really long. Why? Because the Bible says, Enter ye at the straight gates, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth into life, and few there be that find it. Remember when he's preaching this, where did the dead go? They went here, or they went here. Today, where did the dead go? They either go to heaven, or they go here. It is finished. They go to, we, when we die to save sinners, we go to heaven. We don't go to Abraham's bosom anymore. We go straight to heaven. Or if you're lost, you go to hell. The lowest hell. And then someday you get tossed in the lake of fire. But there's tons of people going to hell. Few people going to Abraham's bosom in the Old Testament. Something to think about. I just want to throw that in there, Brother Christ. Something to think about. Today... There's very few people going to heaven, and lots of people going to hell. Brothers, this Christ, just a real quick prick and a little, you know, encouragement. Are you handing out gospel tracts? Are you laying God? You know, if you're too, if you don't feel comfortable handing out gospel tracts yet, are you laying gospel tracts places? Are you taking good uh, Bible messages about the gospel and sharing it on YouTube? Any video you ever watched, you link the gospel message in the bottom, in the comment section. That's a way you can do it. Okay. Have you witnessed to your family members and friends and neighbors? Okay. I always say time is running out. It is. There's no telling when God's going to call me up in life or in death. People, if you don't understand what that means, life, the catching away of the body of Christ. Death, I die before the catching away of the body of Christ and God catches my soul up. Right? Whether he catches me up in life or death, I don't know when that's going to be. It could be tomorrow. I could die tomorrow or God could call us all home tomorrow. I don't know. <laughs> Forgive me. Victoria, my little dog, walking on the floor. These are wood floors to make a lot of noise. But, brothers says Christ, make sure you're out there witnessing. Okay? You're part of the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? 
One more point I want to make is Revelation chapter 1, verse 18. Another false teaching that you get is some teachers will teach that Jesus went down over here. Well, he didn't burn, but he still went down over here to get the keys of hell so then he could free the captives and go up. How many of you heard that? You get this from, they, they, get, they try to get this from Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. He already has it, but they'll say he went down here to get it and went over here. No, he didn't, okay? Why? Because there's this big thing, and I love Peter, I'm going to mention his name because I love Peter Ruckman, he's in heaven. I love, one of my great teachings he does, I love the five surprises in hell. But if you notice that drawing he's doing, he shows demons as if they're in charge of hell, looking at the people that are burning in hell. Like, he, 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 or ha, 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 ha. It's like, no, anybody that's down here is burning. Do you know there's angels in chains down here burning? Do you know there's evil spirits? Some of the evil spirits that Jesus cast out went to hell. Some of them said, is it, don't cast us out, cast us in the pigs. Don't destroy us. Have I come to destroy us? Is it the time? Cast us into these pigs instead. Why? Because they don't want to go to hell, the evil spirits. Anybody that's in hell is burning. The lower hell is burning. Guess who runs hell? God the Father does. Guess who has the key? God the Father does. When did Jesus get the keys? He got it here. I thirst. He burned on the cross. Then he said, it is finished. When it was finished, that's when Jesus got the key. Mm -hmm. Some could argue that he got the key. He, he, some could even argue he always had the key. Because he says he has the key. John 5.22 The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. All judgment is given to the Son. He said it is finished. Now everyone has to go through Jesus Christ. Okay. At the knee, at the the Bible, my dogs are getting out of control. I forgive me, brothers, says Christ. Um, but the Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, so that every one of us shall give an account of this, account of himself to God. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess, though this, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. God is the one that's in charge. Okay. Philippians 2.5, Philippians 2.5, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Equal with God. God the Father and the Son of God are one and the same. That's what it means to be equal. But made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. God the Father came in the likeness of sinful flesh. Why? So he could take on the sins of the world with the cross. That he could die for the sins of the world because of the sins of the world. And being found fashioned as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe Jesus got the key here. I do. But someone can argue that he always had the key because he is God the Father. And God the Father had the key. Okay. When Jesus went to hell, his soul, God the Father, went to hell. He went just to Abraham's bosom. Freed these captives, took them up. He never went over here. Don't let anybody deceive you, brother, says Christ. Remember for Ephesians 4 eight. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up, let he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. When he came down, he first descended, he ascended up. Right. Now, brothers of Christ, there was a lot of nuggets in this, <laughs> nuggets of gold in this study. So, brothers of Christ, the comment sections are there. If you disagree with me on little things here and there, by all means, show me scripture in the script in, in the comment section. But brother says Christ, one thing that you'll never be able, because the scriptures don't back it, Jesus never burned in the lowest hell. He never saw corruption. 
He only went to Abraham's bosom. Where's Abraham's bosom? It's in hell. Where did Jesus do his burning? He did it on the cross. Okay? Don't let people deceive you. Don't fall into respect of persons. Don't fall into the traditions of men. Well, he's, he's taught it this way, and, and I'm just going to teach it the way he taught it. You need to line up with the Holy Scriptures, the Word of God, the King James Bible. And when you say he burned in hell, chapter and verse where he saw corruption. Chapter and verse. Yeah, there's a verse that said his soul went to hell, but he went to Abraham's bosom. Where's Abraham's bosom? It's in hell. It's in hell. People are afraid to say that. Abraham's bosom is in hell. But it's on this side. And it's not the lower hell. But I just Christ, stick to the scriptures. Stick to the scriptures. Okay? So I'm going to end this study with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you, brothers, is Christ, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching. Please keep praying for me in this, and being in God's ministry. And I'm praying for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, every day for your walk with the Lord. Stay in the book. Stay in prayer. And continue to witness for Jesus Christ.